on the front page of the paper, uh, you know, was a, a picture of Michelle Wee. She had a heat stroke. Uh, you know, I, if you're a Michelle Wee fan, I, I don't fault you for that. I just, you know, we're more concerned about Michelle Wee, you know, than we are about what's taking place in the Middle East. Shame on us. Shame. They knew nothing about what was going to happen until it was too late. They just went on with the, their daily lives, and then the flood came. People know nothing about what's going to happen. And, they, and they, they, you see, the world in Noah's day had never seen them. And in our day, I mean, when you, when you talk about the coming of the Lord, I mean, people scoff and they ridicule and they mock. And it's just business as usual, but it's coming. Instead of a flood destroying the world, the, the fire is going to destroy this world. In the days of Noah, right before the destruction of the flood, there was a man by the name of Enoch. It says in Genesis 5.24 that Enoch walked with the Lord and then was no more. He was raptured. He was caught up. He was taken away. Now there is in Bible study this uh, thing called typology where there's a, a picture in the scripture that points to, as a sign, a destination. And that's what really all the feasts were for the nation of Israel. They all pointed to the person of Jesus Christ and his first and second coming. And even the rapture is, is a, in typology uh, with the Feast of Trumpets. And if you look at it, maybe we will, Lord willing, really look at these feasts of Israel and how they tell a prophetic picture and how the rapture is, you know, before the tribulation. Well, Enoch is a picture of the church. And right before the flood, he was raptured and taken away, but Noah and his family, a picture of the Jewish nation, went into this tribulation known as the flood, and they made it through it. And that is exactly how it's going to be for us. You know, people say, well, no one and his family went through the flood, so the church is going to go through the tribulation. No. Noah is a picture of the nation of Israel. And his family survived the flood and are saved by the ark, which is their salvation, in the flood. And they make it through to the end of the flood and they enter a new earth. Just as the Jews will survive the tribulation, and after the judgment, we'll enter into the new heaven and the new earth. Do you know that all through the scriptures, it's not just Enoch and Noah, but all through the scriptures who have pictures of the rapture of the church? Here's another one. Just to sort of whet your appetite for those of you who are interested in typology in the scriptures. How about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They go through the seven times hotter fiery furnace. And they find the Lord in the fire, in the furnace, in the seven-year tribulation furnace. Where's Daniel? Conspicuously absent. Church, Daniel is a picture of the church. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are a picture as Jewish Hebrew slaves, a picture in typology of the Jews. They go through the tribulation. Why? Because the purpose of the tribulation for the Son <laughs> See, the church will not go through the seven-year tribulation. And that's what Jesus is saying here. He's saying that the condition on planet Earth will be like it was in the days of Noah. And I submit to you, as I look about the world around me, I come to the conclusion unmistakably that we are living in a day that resembles the day of Noah. 
Well, our personal application is found really in the remaining verses, 42 through 44. Whenever you see a therefore in Scripture, you can know what it's there for. <laughs> therefore is therefore because everything that Jesus said heretofore is for the therefore. In other words, here's the prophetic information. Now here's what you need to do by way of personal application. Because again, knowledge is just information. But wisdom is the application of that information. Jesus says we have to keep watching. In verse 42, he says that we need to keep watching because we don't know the day or the hour of the rapture of the church. We do know the day of the second coming. Every eye will see him. He will not come as a thief in the night and catch people off guard. The second coming of Jesus Christ is an event that everyone will know and everyone will see. Make no mistake about that. Different with the rapture. In verse 43, he illustrates this by comparing it to one not knowing at what time a thief would come. If he's watching, he won't be caught off guard. But you have to keep watching. Are you watching here this morning? Are you watching the news here this morning? Are you watching for the return of Jesus Christ for his church here this morning? If you are not, then Jesus says you will be caught off guard and it will surprise you as a thief in the night. And so he says in verse 42, uh, 44, So too must we always be ready because Jesus will come to rapture his bride, his church, at an hour that we would not expect him to do it. Now when I say to you what Jesus is saying to us, I'm going to come, he says, at an hour that you do not expect. How many of us, if the truth be known, could honestly say that we really expect Jesus to come and rapture us at this hour? I think if we were really honest, that's not really true. And I'll tell you why I say that. Because if that were true, it would have a profound end, and I include myself in this. If it were really true that we really believe that Jesus could come back at any hour, how would that change the complexion of how we live our lives today? How would that change the schedule that we have for the upcoming week? If we really believe that Jesus could come at any hour, I think it would change what we did not only this afternoon, but what we did this week, whom we talked to, and what we talked to them about. I'm not so sure we wouldn't cancel some things already on our calendars. In the light of the imminent return at any minute, at any hour of the Lord. I want to round the corner. And I have to say, as much as I love teaching Bible prophecy, this has probably been one of the most difficult uh, teachings that I've ever prepared for on a Sunday morning. I asked myself and I inquired of the Lord, Lord, how specifically do we keep watching? so that we're ready, so that we're not caught off guard, and your return at the rapture takes us by surprise at an hour that we don't expect it, like a thief in the night. And in the context of Matthew 24, I think is the answer to that question. The context of Matthew 24 is, watch this right. It's been said that if you want to know what time it is on God's prophetic clock, look at the nation Israel. Isn't that what he said when he said, when you see the leaves and the figs return to the tree, the leaves and the figs being Israel return to the land, that generation will be the generation that sees the coming of the Son of Man? In other words, he's qualifying it. 
He's putting a timeline, if you will, and even though we don't know the day or the hour, we can know that it's soon. 